Look at how gorgeous this is. So how long did it take to write the book? It first started in 2015. I did a piece for Candy. Oh, which right. Which was Love a 40, Candy. yeah, 40 page editorial, five different photographers, and I wrote the text. How long was it? 40 page Stop editorial, it. yeah. Wow. And I just thought, you know what? I really wanted to give some attention to the photographers because to me, they were the most important part and they're also, you know, their photos get passed around, they're never credited. Right, you right. You know, they're just sort of it's like- It's always on Tumblr, just every- Yeah, yeah without the photographers, we would not have existed. Well, one of the genius things about Michael was that he realized right off the bat that if you weren't documented, the scene yeah, didn't happen. Didn't and so many scenes in a, it have been so fabulous, yeah. but they didn't have an in-house photographer. Yeah. And we had our own magazine, we had Project X, to document it. So anyways, and then you got the bug, and you sort yeah, of- Yeah, well, you know, I sort of sat on that for a while. I realized there was a much broader story, and there was response to that was so positive. You know, my, my story involves like a lot of abandonment, a broken family. So when I fell into the club kids, it was the first time I had a family, family. unit. And so I was very loyal to that unit. And I was very loyal to that acceptance. And I think after everything crumbled and the media came out, it was like that human aspect got lost in the narrative. The fact that we really did take care of each other. Yeah. The club kids certainly had their inner circle, but you could work a, a look and, and get in and at least hang out. The scene before the club kids, where it was like the, the details scene, the area, um, uh, Diane Brill, Michael Musto, Stephen Saban, all that, that was really privilege yeah. and power, and it was about being, um, there was a, hi a definite hierarchy. And when Michael came along, the thing we can always say, praise about Michael is that he gave the clubs back to the kids. Sure. And he sort of like was doing a little um, like parody of the hierarchy that the sure. details had. But then it all, you guys really did become the hierarchy. Yeah. It's weird because I really understood the 80s. It, I, it was a decade that I just, fell into step right. with that immediately. Period, I, yeah. I understood it on an elemental level, that right. bigger, glitzy, glamour, right. conspicuous yeah. consumption. Then the 90s, when everything went completely pear-shaped and when it was like, it was all about like grunge and um, deconstruction and all that stuff and everything got dark. Well, the tone changed, the music changed. I mean, with techno, you know, I think the 90s was all about deconstruction across right. the whole thing. Even when you look at techno, it was about ripping apart beats and putting them back together again and then letting all the scars show. The same because with the, the clothes. House, the house, was, yeah, the house music had a very established, like this is the pattern of what you're going to do. Yeah. And this is like everyone was basically sort of the same and they all sort of fed into each other. But right. techno was like... Well, you know, I think we also reached a point after the 80s and AIDS and Reagan you know, where people just wanted to sort of like lighten up. And even things like heroin chic, you find people becoming more introspective and more about finding the inside. And that's where the K comes in as yeah. well. Well, we were also investigating the flesh. I mean, so much focus is on the looks and dressing up. And but we also got into piercing, piercing and, and tattoos. I mean, tattooing was illegal in New York until 1997. We were sort of responding to growing up during the AIDS crisis because at that time, the scariest thing you could think of was blood. Right. So you look at all the 90s kids, we were all Covered sort of in blood. blood. It was all fake theatrical blood. We weren't doing the type of work that someone like Ron Athey was doing but we were doing our sort of approach, and I don't even think we knew why we were doing that it. It's so we interesting. We just knew that the idea of blood had power. It had this power, and it was intimidating. That's so, and so we were like, let's use it. Let's use it as a medium. Because I remember in the late 80s, I was covering myself in blood a lot. And yeah. I, even then when we started doing um, emergency room, yeah. and everybody was covered in bloods and fake, yeah. fake brains and stuff, I never made that connection that it was a reaction to I the terror of, of AIDS. When I started working on the book, it's funny because I got to become a fan of my peers. We were all very focused, in especially our, lanes, yeah. our sort of 90s group. We kind of understood the Club Kid template and we understood identity as a brand. And so we were really focused, focused on, on that. On like, 
pushing it forward. Yeah. You know, in the very beginning, it was like kids in Halloween costumes playing dress up in mommy's clothes, and there was no clear understanding of what we were doing. It was just like, it, it just was what, it was Halloween every night. And then every successive generation, every new wave that came in sort of got it a little more defined, sort of streamlined it a little more, made it a little more glamorous, made yeah. it a little more fabulous. It's like a stone in a tumbler. It's shinier and shinier. Yes. And shinier, yeah. We were but really you, pro. You, yeah. were, you, you'd gone pro.